This video is sponsored by Brilliant. More on that later. I just took a pretty amazing photo from my backyard. I can't stop looking at it. I can't stop thinking about it. And the more I look at this photo, the more I reveal things that I didn't initially expect to see. And researching this galaxy has taken me down a rabbit hole which has led to a full-blown murder mystery. This might be one of the best photos I've ever taken. When astronomer James Dunlop looked through his telescope and saw this in Parramatta, he couldn't make sense of it. At that time, we didn't know there were other galaxies other than our own. It wasn't until 1935, less than 100 years ago, that John S. Parascobopoulos realized that they might be looking at another galaxy, and he called it a dark spiral. But it doesn't really look like a spiral galaxy. In fact, it doesn't really look like anything at all. What kind of galaxy is Centaurus A? And why has it astonished astronomers since the day it was first observed? Let's do a deep dive, deep into Centaurus A. Okay, here's the image processed in PixInsight, but let's go through the easy stuff first. Did you know PixInsight has a finder chart? You can actually generate a chart which shows you where in the sky the object is. And yeah, it's not the uh, greatest map in the world, but it does show you where it is. There it is there in the Centaurus region. The closest very cool looking neighbor is the Southern Pinwheel Galaxy, M83, but it is actually one of a group of 30 galaxies in this area. Quick simple facts to know, it is the third brightest galaxy in the Southern Hemisphere after the large and small Magellanic Clouds, but it's also the fifth brightest on any hemisphere. So it's, it's not a small galaxy, it's a big one to look at. It is actually pretty small, but it's pretty close and clear, which is part of the weirdness. Now if you look at Wikipedia, there is a pretty good image of the X-ray and radio emissions. Uh, it's not something you can see in the visual spectrum at all. But I'm really curious to see how it lays over my image. So I'm going to do a star align on the two images. Now I'll blink them. So now I can see the direction of the lobes going in sort of an X shape here. Uh, but also if I just look at my reference, there's the lobes, there's the... You can see these jets. See these jets pouring out here and they correlate roughly to the same sort of direction as these giant lobes spinning here are they spinning they kind of look like they're spinning they sort of have a bit of a lean but it's hard to say galaxies definitely do spin though but i have to say i'm pleased with my result compared to what's on the wikipedia page even though we get more detail in the x-ray and radio uh, there's a good lot of detail in my image very happy Let's look a bit closer in the image itself. Part of the strangeness of Centaurus A is that it doesn't look like a galaxy, right? It doesn't look like that classic spiral. I can't tell if it's barred, is it just an elliptical? It just doesn't look like a galaxy. And part of that is because of this massive dust lane, which we see in more detail than we really do in any other galaxy. And looking around my image, I definitely see some little faint fuzzy stars. I see hot new blue stars, which I assume are closer to us. And a good lot of detail in the dust lanes, including some dust which is pouring very far away from the main galaxy core, the nucleus. I have annotated the image to see if there's anything else in here that I'm missing and I can't find any labelled or named galaxies in the PGC catalogue or the ARP catalogue, but I definitely see a lot of fuzzies. There's a fuzzy there, there's a fuzzy there, there's a fuzzy there. There's galaxies all through this. My stars look nice and round, which is good. And this star here, which doesn't look round, you can see by the text is actually two stars, very bright, very close, sitting side by side. So that's not my mistake, that's God's mistake. But what I really love about my image is that I've replaced the red layer with straight HA. So I'm using hydrogen, which reveals all the nebula within the galaxy itself. And there is a good amount of nebula in here, star forming regions. Initially, they thought that it might be an E0 elliptical galaxy. And then they changed their mind. Maybe it was an S0 lenticular spiral galaxy. And then maybe an SB barred spiral, or maybe an SC galaxy with multiple arms. They really couldn't decide, which is unsurprising if Hubble's tuning fork classification scheme is all you have to go by, which is all they had at the time. They've settled on S0 Peck, which is an elliptical galaxy, 
and the peck literally means peculiar. The radio emissions suggest a high level of activity in the core, the nucleus of the galaxy, that must have come from a violent event, and it certainly looks disturbed. Now, Hubble images have revealed star forming is going on within this area, and that actually seems kind of obvious even in my images because of the amount of hydrogen emission, the ionized activated hydrogen going on there, which typically happens when new stars are born and the new hot blue stars then radiate out solar wind and that excites the hydrogen atoms around them from the stuff they came from. But you can also see that star forming happening down here, which correlates to these jet directions, right? We've got stars coming out this way some star forming regions and hydrogen fairly obvious in red. Now here's a question, looking at the galaxy, which way do you think we're looking at it? Which part of this image is closer to you and which is further away? The answer is that it's sort of on an angle. Uh, let me, it's on an, how can I illustrate this? I need a stick. Okay, let me get this right in the shot. This is how you're seeing the galaxy, right? So which one of these ends of the galaxy is closer to us? I can't tell this at all by looking at it. Sometimes with nebulas, I feel like I can feel the depth or at least get a sense of the depth just morphologically, just by looking at it. But with this one, it's actually like this. It's the bottom side that's closer to you, the viewer, and this side, the southern lobe that is facing away. And you can see some of the new star formation down the bottom here. You can see all these blue stars. Uh, they are definitely babies. And I don't see a lot of the older stars in here. So it does suggest that the galaxy is somehow active. There is a lot of star forming going on. It's one of the most active galaxies we know about. And that is obvious when you know about the X-ray and the radio emissions. Um, there's a lot going on and it all appears to be happening fairly recently. A lot of the information I'm getting about this galaxy is coming from Annals of the Deep Sky, which I've talked about in other videos. And one of the things it's told me about these jets, these jets that are going off the side here, is that they do appear to be pushing away from the nucleus and they're going at relativistic speeds, which means they're going so fast as a fraction of the speed of light that if you lived in a solar system on one of these stars, you would be experiencing time dilation. Time dilation relative to those in the middle of the core. Anyone who lives here is aging slower than those that live in the core of the galaxy. Is, that is crazy, right? At least in theory. But what is causing all of this activity? Astronomers think that there must have been a violent event, but how, why, and when? And initially they didn't have a lot of proof for this at all. In 1983, Professor David Malin did a deep exposure of Centaurus A and revealed shells in the optical wavelengths, which was some of the first proof that this was indeed the result of a galaxy merger. Now I want to see the shells myself. So let's jump into Photoshop here. I don't know if my exposure is deep enough for this. Now this is best done by inverting the image. So what I'm going to do is copy all these to a new layer, merge them, invert the image, which looks cool anyway. I don't see any shells. What we're looking for is like lines that ripple outwards from the galaxy. So now what I'm going to do is control L for levels and I'm going to pull in the black spot and see if we can reveal any striations at all. And I think I can. It's really subtle. But you see along here, this striation, and maybe one there, and out here as well. And this is what David Malin did to show that there were shells emanating out. And this is something really counterintuitive and not something I'd normally do on an image. It's a bit of detail I never would have seen. Super subtle, but David Malin's version is a lot better and clearer than this. Now, from what we know about galaxies, there must be a black hole in the middle of this one, which sort of drives everything. It drives the rotation. It's the gravitational glue that holds everything together. And there are jets coming out. Through all the activity like that, we know that it's a black hole galaxy. Uh, we've seen this in M87, one of the only pictures of a actual black hole we've ever seen. And M87 too has jets. M87 has jets. It has a black hole. It has radio emission, it has X-ray emission, it basically has everything that Centaurus A has. But Centaurus A I think is closer. But there was a mystery. Um, 
all galaxies typically have these signature globs, globular clusters which should be hanging around. So any of these could be a globular cluster, but they were unable to resolve them. Obviously with my little 11 inch telescope, I can't resolve them. I can't see any globs in here and nor could the initial astronomers. Uh, so what they have to do is use spectra to be able to reveal whether any of these are globs and that allows them to date the galaxy, it allows them to measure distance more accurately, it gives them a better idea of the life cycle and evolution of the galaxy. But no globs could be found, at least initially. They couldn't find any globs because of sample contamination, which means that there's so much glow, both from our galaxy and from Centaurus A, that they couldn't accurately detect any globular clusters. But technology did get better in the 80s, and they were able to reveal, I think initially it was about 60 globs, and now that number is way up to maybe 300 to 600, and there's a bunch of candidates as well. But here's the murder mystery. If this was a galaxy merger, what happened to the other galaxy? And I read something really, really interesting. I read that some of the globs that they found are candidates for being the stripped nucleus of the small dwarf galaxy that must have hit Centaurus A at some point and caused all of this activity, this disruption, the reason why we see all of this looking strange. And the really cool thing was that the main candidate, which is the biggest glob in Centaurus A, where is it, is a glob called HCH9918. That seems to be the main contender for the remaining nucleus of the galaxy that was stripped as it ripped through Centaurus A. And crazy enough, there's a little image of that star in the book. And if we zoom in, it's this one here. That is a globular cluster, which appears to have the metallic composition and the size and the velocity to make it one of the better candidates for being all that remains. We are actually looking at the body. If Centaurus A is a murderer, we have found the corpse. FBI, open up! Astronomers Kate Ebnter and Bruce Ballack think that Centaurus A has an undeserved reputation for being peculiar at all. They say that perhaps there's nothing peculiar about Centaurus A other than the fact that it's so close to us, it looks crazy. We don't get this kind of view with any other galaxy because it's so clear. And maybe if we zoom out of the galaxy, maybe if we saw it from a distance, it would just look like any one of the other fuzzies. There would be nothing weird about it and it would just be classed as a regular elliptical. And I agree and I disagree. Yes, it's peculiar because we can see closer, but that actually opens up way more questions than we would have had if it was any other galaxy, a faint fuzzy in the sky. The fact that we can now ask these questions about Centaurus A and its evolution as a galaxy and see a potential recent collision so soon after it happened and watch the activity, watch the jets and observe a black hole in action, I think sets this galaxy up to being one of the most interesting ones we'll ever be able to see. I'm really happy with my exposures for this one. The hydrogen was made of 18 20 minute exposures. So it took a long time, especially given the inclement weather. It was night after night over weeks and weeks of imaging. And then approximately 20 shots with red, green, and blue, all of three minutes combined as my favorite galaxy combination. I didn't use the red at all, but I wanted the red there so I could show you a comparison between the red optical wavelength and the hydrogen. And this is an example of the sorts of things you can reveal with narrowband, stuff that you just can't see with a regular camera or regular filters. And as I was doing that video and talking about relativistic speeds and the time dilation that in theory could be happening at those stars that are being ejected, those nebulae that are being ejected at relativistic speeds, uh, I took a little brush up on Brilliant.org. Brilliant is a learning platform designed to be uniquely effective and helps build your critical thinking skills through problem solving, not memorizing. Learning a little every day is one of the most important things you can do. Brilliant helps you build real knowledge in minutes a day with fun lessons you can do whenever you have time. Brilliant's scientific thinking course takes you on an interactive tour of our physical world. 
You'll engage with key scientific principles and theories from simple machines like gears and pulleys to Einstein's special theory of relativity. Brilliant lets you learn by doing with hands-on lessons that have you comparing circuits to understand voltage and current, playing snooker to learn the rules of collision, planning your itinerary for an intergalactic music festival on a space-time diagram and more. It helps you build your natural intuition while gaining deep knowledge of scientific principles and is perfect for learners of every entry level. No heavy math required. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for 30 days for free, use the link brilliant.org forward slash Dylan or the links in the description. And if you decide to continue, you'll get 20% off an annual membership. Hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive and remember to keep looking at your photos, not just at a superficial level, not just at a level where you post to Instagram and then forget about it. Actually look deeply into your images. There's more there than you can imagine. My name is Dylan O'Donnell. You've been watching Star Stuff. And remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.